Uh, hello. Uh, last summer, the Harper government uh, changed the long-form census um, with regards to how they, uh, you know, filled in people's queries and responses to a census. Um, this is obviously uh, a change that affects a lot of people, and especially as a federal representative of a community who is going to be impacted by this on a very direct level. Uh, first of all, what are your thoughts on that change? And um, if you do disagree with it, how do you plan on rectifying it so that it doesn't happen? So, Ms. Nash, if you want to go first. Well, it was a dumb idea to abandon the mandatory long uh, form census. Why? Because the long form census uh, gives us the information we need to tell us so much about our society, about who we are, uh, what is the makeup of our community, what are the income levels, uh, uh, what are, what are the, the housing arrangements. It, it informed so many social policy decisions in our country and there was really no good reason to abandon the long form census. It was mythology that somehow there, there were people being sent to jail because they refused to fill it out. Um, in short, the, the New Democratic Party would reinstate the long form census and we would return to uh, this valuable uh, collection of information from our society so that we can make the best policy decisions, whether it's health care, housing, uh, support for newcomers, uh, that we possibly can. Thank you. Uh, you know, uh, this is one of the things that I think escaped some people's notice, but it's interesting how many people got to the core of this. Everybody deserves to be counted. It's kind of a fundamental precept of our society. Now, that's not meant to necessarily be literally, we'll all count each other and we'll make sure you're all counted, but it does mean that in this case. You know, there are friends for the Tibetan community and the Conservative government, but there are also people there who do not believe in as much diversity, think government should not be involved in noticing and rewarding the differences. And from the very highest reaches of this government, they said no to a mandatory census. What that does is it doesn't give rights, it takes away rights to be recognized, to be acknowledged the way people have been. So the question was, how do we fix this? There's just enough time. If the government changes on May the 2nd, there's just enough time to turn this census from a, the long form census into a mandatory census. So in other words, it's been done in the high Arctic, it's been done in the very remote parts of Canada, but it's not yet hit the streets all over the place. And it would only take a change of a page to the census to make it once again a mandatory census. So it's something that people should think about. How are we going to treat our children? How are we going to make sure that we do a good job of health care? How are we going to make sure that seniors get noticed? How do all the people who don't otherwise get seen get counted and included when it's time to create government programs? That's what the census is about. And that's one of those turning points that the Conservative, Conservative Party wants to put inflict onto Canada. And it's one of those things that everyone, doesn't matter whether you come from a minority or a majority group, that people should say there's something wrong with that. If you don't understand the logic of it, it doesn't make sense to you, then that's because it comes from a minority kind of view that wants to be imposed on people. So this is something we're standing up for. Stand up, be counted, vote the right way on May the 2nd. Long form censuses occurred way back in Roman times, when somebody went around and started to write out how many oxen you had, and how many sheep you had, and how many bottles of oil you had. What our worthy opponents here, over here, seem to fail to recognize is that information has exploded. We don't have to have a form that's filled out by everybody. Does everybody in here have an address? Does everybody in here have a health card? Does everybody in here have a driver's license? Maybe. Okay? The thing is, is that information now is everywhere. Is everywhere. We don't have to have you sit down at your coffee table some evening and try and work through this long form asking where you came from or what you did or what you're going on. Well, we have to move towards a new technology that has information in a different way. Because information is everywhere. Information is everywhere. And that is how we're going to get information to find out about how people live, how people survive, what we need to do, 
because we have a modern sense in the Conservative Party about information that the other parties still want to be back, it appears, in Roman times. Thank you. Yeah, if anyone would like to respond. Um... <laughs> It, it, with all due respect, it's a bit nonsensical. Um, and I, who has sheep here? <laughs> um, in a modern society, it is important for us to be able to find out more information about the needs of Canadians so that we can best uh, tailor our healthcare system, we can project what our needs are going to be in our healthcare system. What are our needs going to be in, in things like social assistance, in, in housing, in transportation? We need to know who's here and a little more information about them. Are you working? Are you unemployed? Are you, uh, are, are, are you, are you uh, a small family, large family? Um, it, it, the more information, the better. Now, not everyone fills this information out. You know, we all fill out tax information, we all have our health card, um, and, and relatively few people fill out the census. But because today, the difference is, just to bring clarity to this, the change that is made is not doing away with the long form census, but it is making it voluntary instead of mandatory. When it is mandatory, we have um, we know that the data we are getting is reliable because we, we know how many people are filling it out and what percentage of the population, and so it is reliable. It's like a spot check. But if it's voluntary, and you know, instead of saying, out of this room, 10 people will fill it out, and instead, two choose to fill it out, how reliable is that data going to be? It's going to be less reliable because we will have less of it. So. Uh, with all due respect to my, my honorable colleague, I, I say hogwash. <laughs> well, uh, I, uh, I think the important thing to recognize is what we lose. Uh, cultural differences, language, uh, and not such differences, but characteristics. That's what gets submerged if the long form census is discredited. Most of the people who follow statistics believe we need to do this. So we count up one, two, three, four, five, you'll do the long form census. One, two, three, four, five. Every fifth person. It's not that you're in a lottery, you might have to do it, you might not, but it becomes statistically relevant and it picks up all of our characteristics so that we know our education money being well spent. Is our healthcare money causing the effect that we would like? What kind of training did people have? What kind of job histories do they have? You know what it means? It means we care about each other. It's not a big exercise and the interesting thing is we're now going through a census, unless something changes, as I mentioned before at the election, where we're going to pay more money to do a worse census that might not even be usable. 30 years Canadians have collected the best information in the world, and we've treasured this idea you can be just as Canadian as anyone else despite your differences, but recognizing and making sure everybody has access to the good things in Canada is part of what the census delivers. So that's, you know, a, a long way from the grain dole of the old Romans when they took the census and so on. We're using this for modern reasons, for better government, for a better, more connected people, and for people who make sure that they all really do are taken into account. Thanks. <laughs>